Hey everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and I've got a review for you today. Well, I've got two reviews actually, but <clears throat> the main part of this review is this book. This morning, ring, ring at the doorbell, postman, Royal Mail. Hey, Royal Mail are on strike. No working overtime today. <laughs> you, you couldn't write this stuff, could you? Honestly, they're on strike all bloody week, and then they, <laughs> they can work overtime on a Sunday to get the letters delivered, so... I had a new pair of boots come and bills and everything. There's a great big pile. But in there was this. And this is a magazine, or a book really, that's been sent to me by the lovely Wendy. You can see on the front here, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And it says, Hi Nigel, from Wendy H. Might be worth a look. And if you go on live streams and stuff, any most of you in the community will have heard of Wendy. And uh, she often comments on live streams and says hello and every, everything to everybody. And uh, she hasn't been very well lately, actually, which is unfortunate. But she did email me a few weeks ago and said she'd ordered me this book. And as soon as it's available, it'll be sent to me. And I'm sure I would have had it a lot sooner if it wasn't for Royal Mail. But uh, here we go. So I haven't looked through the book. I've cut the envelope open, obviously, so I could cover my address. And it basically says on here, Hi, nice from Wendy. Might be worth a look. I already said that, didn't I? So... Here we go. This is the magazine book. I'm sure this will be available in all your usual uh, magazine suppliers. It's probably been done by the same people that do the Airfix magazine. Um, but it's got some detailed walk around profiles and also it's how to build the aircraft step by step. Here's mine. So I'm nearly there. So it'll be interesting to see what they say in here and if they come across anything that, that I haven't talked about. Um, Hints and tips for getting the best results, using a drill to drill out the uh, the intake manifolds. Um, technical analysis and Spitfire Aces. On the back, I see they've got an advert for the kit, so um, and lovely it is too. So, going into the book, first page, as I say, I haven't looked at this at all yet. So we've got the... Um, this reminds me of the... Uh, a few years ago, if, if you don't know Jen, go and have a look at her channel, I'll put a link down below. But Jen, she... Um, she built the the first, um, I'm not sure if it was a test shot. Yes, it was a test shot of the Hellcat. And I met her at the Gloucester show and uh, we've been kind of friends ever since. Not friends, we don't go out for a drink together. We don't phone each other up every day or anything. But when I see her at a show, we often have a chat. But uh, I'll put a link to her channel down below. But go and say hello to Jen and uh, have a look at her channel. She does some beautiful work. But um, yeah, it reminds me of that. It's like somebody's built this. It might even have been her. Who knows? So... It kind of, yes, it is two pages. It kind of felt, it's got it's full of static. Maybe it's my bench that's full of static. So um, going into the magazine, here we go. We've got the other um, magazines from their series. That Hellcat will be worth having a look. So we've got Welcome here. Uh, and that's from Stuart Phone, Key Publishing. Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -doo -doo. I'm not sure who built this. And it's not saying... Doesn't say who's built it. Not that I can see just by quickly looking anyway. So um, contents, we've got a de designation puzzle, what's in the box, having a look at the kit, uh, elliptical excellence, fit for an ace, that's talking about the pilot obviously, the Merlin engine, Polish aces, camouflage time to do a Polish aircraft, and then supermarine satisfaction, and then we've got some references, reference photos, and uh, you can see there the very light green colour. And Britain's favourite Spitfire. We've got pictures there of the men painting on the, the white stripes. It's actually interesting that because somebody has commented on my video only today about those stripes were really rough because they were put on with mops. And as you can see, they're not on with a mop there. They're actually brush painting them. So they weren't perfectly straight, but they weren't put on with mops. Not in that case anyway. So designation puzzle. Spitfire historian Peter Arnold offers technical perspective on the Mark 9 and challenges what we think we should know about the C suffix. So uh, there we go. There's always some more information to come out. It's a lovely black and white picture there. And then here we've got the uh, surviving Spitfire Mark 9 of 453 Squadron at Rotsford in March 43. And then here we've got the um, control column there. We've got a firewall. You can see that it's green on there. Oh, I'm just about to do that. Isn't that funny? I was just about to do the bulkhead green and I was going to leave that main spar across here in silver so you can't see it very well because the lighting is all for magazines I've got the lighting bouncing off the wall so um very nice indeed there's the twin seat one you can go up in and here's a load of them with some Lancasters in the background 
lovely picture there. A magnificent shot of more than 50, 40, 50, 40 Spitfires at Castle Bromwich, ready for testing and delivery. I guess this, the lengths are ready for a delivery as well. So here we've got some um, Form 78 movement cards. So that's obviously what it's, the missions it's done. We've got some uh, general arrangement there. <clears throat> then we've got principal modifications made to the Mark 9. There's the mod number, there's the location, and there's the actual mod that's carried out and the date it was done on. So that's really good. I wish I had that for the Lancaster. Then we've got some proper drawings here, which are very, very nice indeed. Drawings of the cannon arrangements. There's a Mark 16 there with the uh, bubble canopy. Some great reference photos in here. And they're advertising some more books. And then we've got the, all the options you get in the kit. I'm thinking I'm going to do that one now. Very nice, got an image of the decal sheet there. So here we can see spruce shots of what you're actually getting in the kit. You've already seen my review, no doubt. I would like to see some close-up pictures to see what that spine is like there. Because on mine, the, in that area there, the riveting is really heavy. Got the upper wings, the main spar on there. Very, very nice indeed, talking about the kit. All the different picks and pieces on the spruce. Very nice indeed. So basically it's just going to sell the kit. This is one thing I didn't like. The exhaust stubs were all um, hollow on the back. So you won't see that in the video yet. But I've actually done them. And I've filled in the hollow. So they're, they're no longer hollow in the back. Clear instrument panels. Quite where they made them clear, I do not know. That's a kit I must get, that 148th Hanson. And here we go, this is going to be the model spec. And this is talking about how to build it, how to get it all to go together. Talking about drilling out this. Here we go. This is something that they might have, might have even picked up off of me. I very much doubt it. But run round after you drilled holes, run round with extra thin. Anywhere you've been sanding or whatever, doing it on seam lines, just run some extra thin over there and it will get rid of the sanding marks. Painting up the uh, cockpit and everything. As you can see, and then drilling out bits and pieces. Drilling holes in the seat, I didn't do that. I didn't see that, so I'll have to look at that and perhaps do it on mine if it's not too late. Actually, the seat belts cover it. There's the plastic seat belts unmodified, so you can see there how they look. And you can see that modifying them is well worth doing. So, uh, well worth doing. It's funny, you know, because I've done everything they're doing. I opened up those holes. I haven't drilled those holes. I didn't really know there were holes in there. Right, going through the build, all the interior wing, which I've already done. They remembered to spray in their wheelbase. I didn't. <laughs> After I said it and told you because you wouldn't be able to get paint in there very easily, I went and forgot to do it. So, as I say, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> uh, there's all the guns. We've done all that already. You don't have to glue the guns in. You can fit them afterwards, as I've done. They're using brass barrels on this one. Don't really see the point, to be honest, in fitting brass barrels on here because most of the barrel is not exposed in the in the bay and none of the barrel is exposed in the wing. So I don't really see the point. Just drill the end of the gun barrel out and it'd be absolutely fine. There's the wing built up. They're following the instructions, you see. And then building up the engine. Beautifully done. See, now they're saying they need to drill out those holes. I didn't have to. I mine are absolutely fine. There's something going on with that sprue K. There's something going on with that sprue because, as, as we know, some of my bits were damaged. So there's something going on there. But, um, that, that fit of those two parts there is absolutely gorgeous. So they built up the engine there. Got the Rolls Royce bit painted. I haven't done that bit yet. There's the engine there if you want to see it in the flesh. Really, really nice. And there's the propeller. I've just done the propeller. As part of part nine. So 
just painted up the blades before they fitted them. Always do your yellow first. I paint them white first, then I paint them yellow, then mask them, paint them black. All these different pipes here going in. I didn't know that pipe there had to be brass colour. I'll have to have a look at that. I wonder if they talk about fitting that pipe in, like I said. Now they've cut theirs, that they've cut the pipe off. So I made a video yesterday about not cutting that pipe off. You could just slit through the side there and do it that way. Fuselage halves going together, big ejector pin marks to fill in, which they're filling in obviously. Which I did on mine. Front bulkhead. All the cockpit internals there going in. Marking up the um, gun bay doors. You don't really need to mark them up. They won't fit the wrong side, won't fit the wrong side. And also on the doors, there is an extra fastener on this back edge here. And that goes to the back. So that's if you don't want to mark them up with magic marker and stuff. If you're all painted and everything, that's the way they go. They've got an extra, extra little screw or Zeus fastener. And that goes to the back. Here we go, masking up. Ready for the paint. Got that beautiful azure blue underneath. Very, very nice indeed. He's done his bulkhead silver, so I'm going to do mine green, I think, and leave the wing spar silver. This is the exhaust nozzles come as two part items for a hollow nozzle. Once the runner attachment burrs are removed, assembly is swift with each, each receiving an airbrush coat of alcohol steel, which gave a suitably burnished appearance before the nozzle ends were treated with the exhaust manifold. See, they haven't mentioned on here, one of the, it's, it's really the only bugbear, I think. They've put the sprue nib right where the weld seam is. So I've actually recreated the weld seam using stretch sprue. And you'll see that in part eight, I think. So um, you'll enjoy that. And then there's some pictures there of the finished model. What I would like to see is what it looks like with all the cowlings on. Because you don't seem to get any pictures of it with the cowlings fit. See, there's, there's one there. I'd love to know what the kit looks like with the cowlings fitted. We've got some lovely reference photos going on here. Look at that working in that mud and everything. Beautiful images here of the uh, certain aircraft. Oh, it's lovely stripes on it. Well, Wendy, you said this might be handy for some pictures. It certainly is. It's fantastic for uh, reference for reference shots. Oh, look at that one there. Look. And there's a brilliant picture of the stripes. What they were like and all the worn off on the leading edge look and there they are painting them on very nice indeed britain's favorite spitfire they used to have a spitfire at rolls royce in bristol and i made it i made a couple of parts for it i can't remember what they were but i turned some parts and i know they went in it that was that was many many years ago when i was an apprentice something somebody was asking me yeah, it should have a headrest, shouldn't it? Although that one doesn't have one. Look, somebody was asking me why the kit doesn't have a headrest. And I'm wondering if certain certain ones did and certain ones didn't. You see, there it is there. There's the leather headrest. I think it's in the kit, but it's not shown in the instructions. It's interesting. So you can see here, be careful of this. This is all restored stuff. So be very, very careful. Yeah, see, look at the exhaust stubs. People always do them rusty, and they don't necessarily rust. Here we go, accessories. Barracuda Studios are doing some resin wheels. Airscale are going to do the, um, the cockpit harnesses, allied placards and metallic placards. Um, CMK will be doing some stuff. Edard will obviously do some stuff. Grey Matter Aviation, Kits World, yeah, they'll do some loads of stuff for it. Master Model. Then we've got some different decal sets there because obviously there's been 24 scale spitfires from airfix and trumpeter around for a long time so there'll be decals and stuff you can get so there we are that's like an interesting little magazine 
So there we are, and there's the there's the kit itself. So thank you very much, Wendy. Absolutely wonderful. I shall be looking forward to going through this. Nice bit of bedtime reading, and um, I can see what I've got wrong. I just saw loads of masking tape. Then what are they masking up? Oh, masking up to paint the flap area. So there we go. So very very good. Thank you very much, Wendy. Also in that package that came today was a box, and the box came from this company here. I thought it said on there, Anis, you know I used to have my stickers on my bench here. Anis, hey Nigel, hope you enjoy my new product, thanks. Tom. So Tom over at Anis, that's the email address. If you want to go and look at his website, email address and website, go and have a look at his website. He, um, Absolutely brilliant stuff. He does, I've done a lot of reviews of his products. Absolutely brilliant. Got all the cockpit decals and everything. But he's now done these super precision tweezers, which are going to be really good. You can see free product sample, not for sale. So tweezers for highest precision modelling tasks like applying anise decals, resin or PE parts, anti-corrosion and anti-acid. So just open it up. Nice little packet. And you can see in here we have a very slim AN059, lovely little pair of tweezers, very, very sharp point. You could easily stab yourself with them. And for me, the big twist test with tweezers is, look at that, they, they spring over, but they spring straight back. One of the biggest problems with cheaper tweezers, like these here, you can see these here. You close them up, they just they're all over the place. When you pick parts up, you see with a tiny bit of pressure, they do that. Whereas these, I can force those closed as hard as I like, and they don't cross over. So that's going to be the beauty of these. So these are going to come in very, very handy, but I'm going to make sure I keep that protective cover on there, I think. So thank you very much, Tom. Go take a look at them. Um, it did say they're stainless steel, didn't it? Anti-corrosion and anti-acid, so I'm assuming they're stainless steel. But uh, very, very nice. I'm not sure if they're magnetic. Yes, they are. They can still be stainless steel because not all stainless steels are magnet uh, non-magnetic. But uh, they're not very magnetic, so there we are. So thank you very much. AN059, and as I say, super precision tweezers, and you can get them from there and each dot io okay he wasn't a while ago he stopped shipping to the uk but he's shipping to the uk again now so go take a look at his site go buy some stuff it's incredible thanks for watching guys and thank you very much wendy for that amazing book and i'll um i'll speak to you all soon bye for now